What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. This week we're going to be taking a look at a full visual effects shot. So a common type of shot that you often get as a visual effects artist is to add muzzle flashes to a prop gun or just a fake gun. So in this case I have an airsoft gun which doesn't have any internal components so what we have to do is add in a fake chamber, we have to have a fake bullet casing being ejected, that's going to be done in Maya, and then we're going to add in all the muzzle flashes and all the reflections and we're going to roto in all those little flashes as well. So I'm going to be showing you how to import a DPX sequence into After Effects. Most of this is going to be in After Effects, but we are going to go into Maya and render out the sequence of a bullet casing being ejected with V-Ray as well. So if you don't have Maya or V-Ray, rest assured, the rest of the tutorial should be fine. However, you might need to find some other sources in order to know what buttons to click. The fundamentals are going to be the same. If you are using Maya and you're using Arnold, you will have to use a sequence render unless you have paid for the full version of Arnold because there's no batch support. All right, guys, if that sounds good, check the link in the description where you can download the plates and there's also some other resources that you might find useful as well. All right, let's get started. Okay, first thing, drag your footage into a new composition. Go to our working space. Make sure you're working in 32 BBC. Working space is set to sRGB and we need to linearize the working space. And when you linearize the working space with certain DPX sequences, you're gonna get something that looks very, very washed out. So in order to fix that, we need to apply a Cineon converter. That's a Cineon converter, pull this on. And right away, when you put that on, you can see it looks a little bit better, but we need to change some of the options here. So first of all, the black point value, we're gonna use true black, so zero. And then for the white point, we're gonna use true white, which is 1023. The highlight roll off uh, is a way of softening highlights. We don't really have strong highlights and we'll do our own tone mapping, so that's fine. So for gamma, we're using 2.2 because that is the gamma for sRGB. Okay, so this is what we should get and now we are ready to begin. All right, so now this is done, I wanna make a new color correction layer. So a new adjustment layer. I'll just call this uh, master color correction. Okay, so for color, I'm going for more of a nighttime dusk shot and I do want it to look a little bit more wintry. So it was winter when this was shot and the plate, in terms of the color, doesn't look particularly cold. All right, so I wanna darken it down, reduce the saturation, and then have more of a bluish or cooler effect to the color. So the first thing we're gonna do is add a curves. Grab a curves effect and right away, I'll just start crushing the black values. Add in some highlights. I'm gonna to go to the blue channel and just infuse a bit more blue and then go to the red channel and pull out some red. I'm gonna add a hue and saturation effect. Now, since this is supposed to be night, colors should be a bit more desaturated, so something around negative 25. And then last of all, I wanna add a photo filter. So I don't really use photo filters very often, but they are qu quite useful if you're trying to go for a very warm or very cool tone. So I'll drop this down to 15%, doesn't look quite as blue now. But I think I will add a little bit more contrast on this curves. Something more like that. That will be pretty good for now. So when you're doing muzzle flash shots, establish where he's actually firing. So as soon as the actor flinches right there, that frame before, like right when he pulls the trigger, you can see on his finger, that's when the flash should start. So for the flashes themselves, we're gonna be using the action muzzle flash pack and there's two flashes here that would be appropriate. You can make them yourselves or you can find other stock footage. Uh, this is free though, so I, I recommend it. They're, they're pretty useful. Okay, so right at frame 125, I'm gonna grab muzzle flash front nine. Make sure you put everything underneath your master color correction. It's vital that you do that. It's gonna move this right here. And then I'm gonna scale this down. Click S for scale. Pull this down to about 10% or so. I'm gonna set the blending mode to add. Let's position it right there. I wanna add a vector blur. So I'll just lower the values here. If I set this to full, you can probably see the, looks a little bit more gassy. I wanna add a turbulent displace as well. And with the turbulent displace, you can kind of just reposition how this looks. Kind of just like the default, actually. One thing that's gonna end up happening as we stack on different layers, this is gonna get brighter and brighter and brighter, which is gonna result in clipping. So you need to make sure you keep referencing your info over here right now. We're not getting any clipping, so we can just leave it as is. But we're gonna to have to come back to this part in a moment. So we need another element to put on top of this. And I want it to be more directional. I'm gonna add a new solid, call this directional flash. Pull this layer either underneath or on top, it doesn't really matter. Grab your pen tool and we'll just make a little triangle shape, something like this. Don't worry if it looks super sharp, we can uh, feather it out. It's just easier to maintain if it's just very simple, there's only three vertices. Add a fill effect. 
Now if you want to sample the same color, make sure you turn off your master color correction and just sample the same type of color or you could maybe go a little bit warmer with it like that. Turn your master CC back on and then we're going to set the blending mode to add and then click F for feathering and I'm going to turn off my mask toggle and I'm just going to pull this out. Turn it back on and we're just going to animate this over a couple frames. So one frame ahead, pull this over the barrel, increase the length try to get the perspective the same. And then for the next one, don't try to move it with the barrel because the gun is already fired and you can just pull this out pretty far. So on 120, 125, you can also start feathering a mask. So right here, it's fine at 24. If you go up one frame, you can increase the feathering, maybe around 40 or something. And then by the time you get to 127, the feathering can be much higher more around that you might just space this keyframe out by one frame and then increase this value to something like 200 let it dissipate more so right now it kind of looks like there's a projectile being shot out of here but uh, the whole point of this is to kind of do something slightly more over the top it is at night so you could expect a, a rifle to give a somewhat impressive flash uh, perhaps not with this caliber but uh it's just kind of fun to do this. Okay, other things we can do, we can animate the opacity. So click T for opacity. On frame 125, it could be 100%, and actually it can be 100% here as well. So we'll keyframe at 126 at 100, go forward two frames, and we'll set that to zero. So it's like that. Okay, so now what we have, we have one small flash, a directional flash, but as you can see here, it doesn't really look like this flash is coming from within the barrel. It kind of looks like it's coming in from behind. So take this directional flash layer and do a duplicate. So control D. And now we're definitely getting into the realm of clipping. If we look at all three of these stacked on top, we're getting in the blue values. We are getting clipping 1.1. We will have to come back and address this. If you don't, you're gonna get some weird color stuff going on. You might get like a really, really bright blue or magenta area in the center, like false color. So we do need to correct that. Uh, but for right now, we're just gonna move forward. And once we have all the glow elements, then we'll go back and start color correcting them all at once. If we try to color correct everything individually now, since we don't know what we're gonna have, it's just gonna be a waste of time. All right, so I wanna add a glow effect. Call this glow. Move this underneath your color correction. I'm gonna grab a mask, hold down shift to make a perfect circle. Control T is how you do a free transform. And then with the control key and the shift key, you can scale it uniformly. A lot of curves to this layer. And then we'll increase our values here, something like this. Like I want this to be pretty warm. I'm gonna remove some of the blue, something more like that. Okay, so we need to open up the full mask controls, keyframe mask path. We can go for one, two, three frames. Click Ctrl T, and then again, holding the Ctrl and Shift keys, we can drag this out, something more like this. Click F for feathering, and then we're gonna start the feathering pretty high, something maybe 250, something around there. We'll go forward one, two, three frames again, and then we're gonna need to do that quite a bit more, maybe more around 500 or so. All right, so next, we're gonna animate the opacity. So actually, what we'll do for the opacity, we'll trim this layer, First of all, so we don't have to mess around with animating it, so that layer won't even start until frame 25. We'll set a keyframe here at 100%, go forward, one, two, three, and then we'll set that to zero, something more like that. All right, so looking back here in the center of the muzzle flash, on frame 126, I'm gonna grab this other stock element footage, the muzzle flash front three. Just drag this down here, click the left bracket key to get it into the right position. I'm going to add this again, so add it, and then we're going to lower the scale quite a lot. I just want it to be resting behind the directional flashes. It doesn't actually matter if we physically put that layer behind or not since all of these layers are additive. And there's some weird color stuff going on just because everything is, is so bright, but I also want to add a turbulent displace. So we have a turbulent displace right here. So we can grab that one, just paste it here. And then for the size, I'm gonna reduce the size quite a bit. I kind of want those like crinkly edges, something more like that. And then you can just play around with the evolution, find something you like. I will also increase the complexity. And then I will add a curves effect to this and I'll, I'm just gonna drop this down. Don't drop it too far, otherwise you get that kind of weird clamping. You wanna pull this up until it's pretty seamless. 
pull this down until just before it begins to fade. I'm gonna go back to our directional flash, tweak these a little bit. Doesn't matter if they're both the same or not, as long as they're in line with each other just about. So something like that is gonna be okay. If that looks a little bit too pointy still, you can open up these layers and you can increase the feathering at the beginning. So maybe something around 50 or, or 60 would be better. So also we need to trim these directional flashes because they shouldn't start until frame 125. And the way you do that, just select these layers and then do Alt left bracket. Otherwise you can just animate the opacity, but since layer trimming exists in After Effects, you may as well use it. All right, so we're moving on here to the next part. So we have a lot of different glow elements to add and a lot of different flash elements, like for example, on the scope, on the, on the gun, his face. Uh, but the one part that's like gonna be a little harder to do is the grass. We can't really just overlay one giant adjustment layer because some of the grass has quite noticeable shadows because the grass is being covered by other blades of grass. So the occluded blades should not be as illuminated. And in fact, they, they might not get any of that light at all. So the way that we wanna do this is copy our plate and then we're going to make a mat just of the highlights of the grass. So in order to get those highlights where we want them, we need to duplicate our plate. So to prevent any confusion, I'm actually going to rename this to be plates, duplicate that layer, and then we're going to call it grass highlights. I'm going to solo this layer, grab a curves effect, crush the shadows, crush the highlights, smoothen this out, do something more like, more like this. Add a bit more red into that. Take out some more of that blue. Unsolo this. And then we're just going to screen the values back on. So it looks oh, a bit weird right now, but we're not going to be using all of this. Now what we need to do is mask out the areas that we want to use. So we'll have an area around the gun that's going to be the brightest area. Thing around here. I'm going to turn this off. So click M. Set this to non. Just so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to go around his body. Something like this. I'm going to give up quite a bit of uh, overlap here with the edges. And then the part right here in the front, we I don't want to include this part. The part is further away, and I don't want the glow to look like it can go anywhere. Okay, so I'll add this back in. And this part, this last mask we just made, is going to be subtractive. Click F for feathering, and then we need to feather these. So I'm going to feather this quite a bit, like 200 or so pixels. Make sure the feathering goes past the edges. This one, we can also increase the feathering quite a bit. And then what I'll do, instead of repositioning this mask, I'll just open up the mask controls and then decrease the expansion, pull it back in. All right, so unsolo the layer, set the blending mode to be screen, and then we'll animate when this turns on. So again, we can trim this layer at 125. It can't start before that. So the very first frame here at 125, click T. We'll set the opacity to about 25%. Go forward one frame, then it will be at 100%. Then over the next three frames, it will just die off. I think we might actually pull that in one more frame. It dies off a little bit faster. And then you can play around with these masks if you want some more of the grass to, to glow. Also, increase the feathering on some of these masks. All right, moving on back to the glow layer. We need to add more masks to determine where light should show up. All right, so to do that, we're gonna grab pen tool. So we need a glow directly underneath the barrel. Okay, so then for the gun, I'm actually going to separate that out into a separate layer. Let's call this flash highlights. And for this, we're just going to select parts of the gun and the dude. Mask out areas where there should be more of a glow. And when you're doing this, we're going to be using very feathered masks. So do be somewhat careful of what you're selecting, but it doesn't have to be precise. Not really rotoscoping this. For example, don't really worry about these blades of grass. If they become noticeable when you play back the animation, then you can go ahead and start you know, masking those out. But the flash is gonna happen so quickly that if you don't really notice it, even if you go frame by frame and it doesn't look that bad, then at least for the beginning, don't worry about it. So I'm not even worrying about any of the feathering right now. I'll do that after I've done the selections. Anything that faces the direction of the flash, 
he's probably gonna get some kind of highlight. One little trick, if you increase the exposure, it's like a temporary fix, you can kind of see the edges a little bit better. Holding the alt key, you can grab the handles and move them around. Right, the barrel of the gun would definitely get some kind of highlights on it. Let's do this as one solid piece. It's easier to do these as solid pieces instead of trying to do one mask for everything. All right, so after you've got your masks down, the next part is you need to keyframe their positions. So you'd have to select all of these masks. You gotta keyframe the mask path at frame 125. Also, you should trim this layer at 125, so alt left bracket. And when you do that, when the gun moves, the masks don't move. So this is what we have to do. We have to realign them. So what I recommend, go to 127, and then you're gonna have to go one by one and reposition these. Move this down, for example, like this. It doesn't have to be precisely exact. We're not really rotoscoping per se. It's gonna be very, very rough roto. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest and then come back. All right, so I've moved these now. Good enough for what we need for, for right now. So if you need to go back and fix stuff, you can do that at any point. But what we need now is another curves. And on the curves, we need to increase the brightness. Do something like that. We'll grab the red curve, pull the red almost to the same level as the contrast curve, and then pull down the blue. I'm gonna hide the masks now. And then you can see, obviously, we need to feather these out, which is the next part. So I click the layer, click F. And what I would recommend that you do is feather everything like quite a lot like 40 pixels or so and then go ahead and then correct parts that you notice as being too glowy around the edges for example this one should not be 40 maybe 10. all right so i've animated those masks and i've also feathered them really tedious but there's not a lot to really show there uh, just make sure that they move with the gun and they're feathered also make sure you trimmed it so it starts at 125 then the next part is we need to set keyframes for the opacity. So click T. At the very beginning, we're actually going to start this pretty low. So let's start this maybe at 50, 50%. And then by the time the main blast comes on, we'll do 100. And then we'll go for two frames and then set it to zero. So we'll have to do the same thing with this glow element down here. In fact, what we might do, take this mask from the glow, cut it, and then paste it on highlights. And then it will dissipate at the same rate. So as we go through this, I might be making some small adjustments. For example, this muzzle flash 3, I think it needs to be scaled down just a little bit, something like 20% and then repositioned. Uh, there will be, there is some color discrepancy here. This is very reddish. This is not very reddish. This is still blue in areas. So we do have some work to do on that, but we should power forward and do the rest of this composition and then we can start finessing the color. Okay, so another thing that we should do is this is glass. So this glass should reflect a lot more than it's currently reflecting. Grab a new adjustment layer, call this scope highlight. Go find that mask, copy that mask, and then you'll want to paste it on the scope highlight layer. And then on that layer, we're going to grab curves. But this time we can be a lot more flexible with our color. Again, we want to trim this at 125, and we'll use the same opacity that we did before. Start it at 50, go forward, 100, forward 2, and then turn it off. So right there, I've noticed it slips a little bit to reposition that right there. So to fix the grass highlights being too red, let's just go down to the grass highlights layer. We'll add a hue and saturation effect. And we'll just remove some of the saturation. You can also go to the blue channel and just pull this down a little bit more. Click F, and then I might just feather this a little bit more. Go to the mask expansion, and then actually increase that a little bit, more like that. Okay, that looks a little bit better. All right, so I have two action essentials elements here. So if I look at this one, one is dust, pretty large amounts of dust there. And the other one is a little firecracker type of thing. And I just kind of want that for the little sparks at the beginning. Obviously, if you don't have action essentials, you're not gonna be able to use these exact elements. However, if you happen to wander over to YouTube, you can probably find something very, very similar to these. So for the firecracker, I'm gonna add that right on top of the directional flashes. 
and this should start at 126. Move this over. I'm gonna scale this down to 25%. Move this right here. Blending mode is gonna be additive. I have a hue and saturation effect on it. And we're gonna colorize this. So we're gonna go colorize, and we'll set the saturation to about 60% or so. And we'll grab a curves effect. We'll pull down the curves quite a bit. I'm gonna cut off the first frame of this. This is a duplicate. And I will have this at 126. So it starts and there's no sparks. And then you get some sparks and then they go away. So there's no need to animate the opacity on this. We'll just have this go a couple frames and we'll just turn it off. All right, so for that dust, I'm gonna pull this down underneath our muzzle flashes. Have to start at frame 125, and we're gonna reposition this around there. It's going the wrong way, so the smoke is gonna be going out like that. What I wanna have happen, I want it to be going the other way. So we'll go up to Layer, Transform, and then we do Flip Horizontal. Click S, and then we just scale this up until Actually, we'll scale this up quite a lot, maybe like 190% or something around there, because we want this to cover the canvas. And we also need it to start kind of right underneath the barrel of the gun. I'm going to solo this layer. I don't like that first couple frames, but we can start it right there. So we're going to trim this off. And then we'll go backwards a couple frames like this. So we're not going to be changing the blending mode. So we need to take our curves and we need to drop down the highlights quite a bit. Also going to grab a hue and saturation. And we'll drop down the saturation about 50%. We'll pick up some of the blue tint from our color correction. Also go to the blue channel. We can pull out some of the blue just a little bit. We can go to the red channel. We could infuse just a little bit of red. Then there's a little bit too much green in that. So we'll just pull out some green. I think actually a little bit too much red. Something like that. Okay, so for the dust, we're going to start this actually at 50%. We'll go forward to around frame 140, set this to about 15%, and then we'll let this go for about another second, and then we'll set that to zero. That might be a little bit hardcore, but this whole thing is kind of over the top, so it should be all right. All right, so I'm gonna go let's collapse all these layers because we're now almost ready to put in the slider and also do the Maya part of this, the inserting the bullet. Before we do that, I'm gonna add a vignette to our color correction, and actually this is gonna be a separate layer. Let's go call this vignette. And vignette needs to go underneath our color correction. even yet and the default settings on this are fine go to our grass highlights i'm just going to tweak that saturation still looking a little too red that's a little bit better on our directional flash you can grab a curves effect on this as well increase the red you can do the same thing underneath as well go to our blue channel and we can pull out some of the blue on our firecracker you could also just pull out a bit of the blue Something more like that. Okay, so this is looking all right. We have a lot of work to do, but the next part is gonna be this slider. So before we add our bullet, what we gotta do is this kind of annoying part where this this is an airsoft rifle, so it doesn't actually have a chamber, but we gotta make it look like there is a chamber. So the way we're gonna do this is just with some simple solids, but as soon as he starts to pull this back, we need to put a, a mask around this to make it look like it's really dark and then have it close again. So the bullet's gonna be in there, the bullet casing, and then it will pop out when he's done firing, and then he'll slide it back in, and then it's gone. All right, so let's do this part. So all of this stuff goes underneath the flash. He starts to pull out the slider at 141, so we'll start there. Go to our grass highlights layer, layer, new, and we'll call this, call this slider mat. Turn this off. For this, I'm gonna boost the exposure just so I can see what I'm doing. And we're just gonna put a mask around this metal part here. And then we have to animate this mass path because the gun is moving. So this is not how I would recommend rotoscoping normally, but this is such a small little area, it's okay to work linearly. Um, I'll try to do a video at some point on good rotoscoping practices, but for right now, just doing this frame by frame is fine. This is also gonna be so small and so dark, it's gonna be very hard to see. But this is open for quite a few frames. Click Control T to rotate your mask. Okay, we've got something like that, that will work. So this is always gonna be colored in. Turn off our master color correction, reset our exposure, and we need a fill effect. So our fill effect, we can just sample some dark part of the gun. Turn this layer on, and we can use that 
along with our master CC. That's actually looking a little bit too dark. Go to our brightness and just boost that value up until it blends in, something around there. And next what we need to do, feather this just a couple of pixels, like maybe even just one pixel. And now we need to put a mask on top of this as well. At 141 is where it starts, so we need to trim that layer at 141. And then at 154, he's completely closed, so this should all be trimmed. We're actually gonna be controlling how this shows up with a mask. Let's grab a pen tool again, and I'm gonna turn this layer off so I can see what we're doing. And you can notice that there is a, more of a highlight that emerges when he pulls back the slider. So this part is like cleaner because this part's exposed. So all we need is a straight edge, something like this, to use as our mask. So at frame 142, we can keyframe this. Here's a, a useful trick. If you lock your masks, so you can get them to disappear. And that control is under layer, mask, hide locked masks. It's very useful, you do have to turn that on, it's not on by default, but masks have a tendency of getting in the way. All right, so at 142, this should be perhaps there. 141, this should be all the way closed. 143, it's almost all the way open, kind of see that edge, and this is open even more. You might alter that very slightly, do something more like that. If you look at the distance that he pulls this out between these two frames, it's not that much. Let me pull this out a little bit more. And then we're gonna to have to do the opposites when he starts pulling this in, you'll notice it close. So we'll set a manual keyframe. Go forward just a little bit. We'll go forward, forward again. And then at this point, it's closed. So I might pull this into about there. Okay, so we'll use this as our as our mask. So we'll turn this layer on, and we're gonna set this to be an intersection. So wherever these masks intersect, that's where the first mask gets colored in. And then as you close it, it goes away. And then actually we can take this layer and have this end at 153, so then by 154 it's completely gone and we don't have to worry about making sure that mask stays where it's supposed to be. We do need to make sure we feather this out. It looks too sharp. We can simply add perhaps 10 pixels, then I will darken that down again. It looks a little bit too bright. Maybe something like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. So there's one more thing that I'd like to do inside the comp before we go into Maya, do the bullet and render that out. And that's doing some camera shake. We're actually gonna use a null object. The null object is gonna be called camera shake. So remember for a null object, it's not important where it goes. Uh, it doesn't contain any pixel information, so you can put it above the color correction, it doesn't matter. All right, so we're gonna grab two slider controls. The first one, if you click enter, we can rename this to be frequency. Underneath, click enter again, and this one will be called intensity. Okay, so what we wanna do here, click P on your camera shake layer, and we're gonna add an expression to position. So hold down the Alt key and click the stopwatch. All right, so we're gonna add a wiggle expression, so just type in wiggle, open parentheses, and then we're gonna grab our pick whip and we're gonna attach it to a slider. So this is gonna be the frequency. And we're gonna do a comma and do the same thing for the intensity slider. So as soon as he fires, we'll add a little bit of a shake. Okay, so now we need to attach all of these layers with the exception of the CC layers. Grab all of these and we're gonna attach them to camera shake. So now what you can see, if you go to our camera shake and then start moving the frequency and then we play it forward, it's going to kind of bounce the camera around. But now we can animate this with a slider control. If you were to just put in values on the wiggle expression, there's no way to control it within this function. So at 125, we'll start the shake. We go up to your camera shake and we'll set keyframes for the sliders. And actually what you can do, you can open these up and you actually get the slider control. So we'll go forward one frame, click U so you can see your keyframes. And we'll start the, the frequency at about two and then the intensity at about 20. Then we'll go forward to around frame 150 or so and we'll set these both to zero. Now you can go ahead and do the same thing for rotational shake. So if you want the camera to kind of rotate instead of just bounce up and down, you can definitely do that. All you would have to do here is add two more slider controls. You click R to access your rotation. I'll click the stopwatch, type in wiggle. First one is gonna be the frequency, comma, 
and then it's going to be the intensity. Same thing, keyframe at 125 at zero, go forward one frame, and then you could set the rotation frequency to quite high, like 10, and then the intensity though to quite low. And then by the end here, we can just set these both to zero. So if we zoom out here and then we play this forward, because we're moving this around, we are actually losing some of the image. So another thing that you have to do with your camera shake null object is increase the scale. So if we did something like 105%, you'd actually have to watch this to make sure that that was, that was all right. So you do need to be careful about losing too much. Uh, one thing you can't do successfully, unless it's a very subtle shake, you can't really animate the scale going in or out, otherwise it just looks really weird. If it happens over several seconds, you can sometimes do that and it's fine but usually you're just gonna have to lose some of your footage. But adding that shake adds a lot more impact to this. What we've added might be a little bit too strong, so you might have to just tweak the results. It looks like he's firing a cannon instead of just a, a little rifle. So we can go ahead and just tweak those results for the intensity perhaps. We don't do 20, maybe we just do 10. And then on the rotation frequency, we just half that to five. And let's have a look at that. A little bit better. Still might be a little bit much, but uh, yeah, it's up to you what you want to do with that. Okay, before we put this into Maya though, we do need one still image. And I probably don't want to have the color correction on to make it a little bit easier to see. So we'll turn the master CC off and then we'll just do composition, save frame as file, and put this in your source images folder. You can change the format down here. Something like a JPEG or a PNG is fine. Render. All right, so in Maya, the first thing we wanna do is make a camera. So we need to go to camera, we'll view from that camera, then we need to make an image plane. So we'll go to our environment, create, and then we'll go load in that file. All right, so this is our file. Make sure you have your resolution gate on so you can actually see what's gonna be rendered. And this is the tricky part, somewhat tricky part is gonna be matching the perspective of the gun and the whole scene. So in order to do that, we're just gonna make some very, very primitive geometry, something like a cylinder. We'll rotate this in place. And the goal of this is to line up, match everything up, and then try to get this to make it look like we are recreating the view from the camera. Uh, for something as simple as a bullet flying out, it's not particularly important if you mess this part up just slightly. The things to look for when you're doing this, and let me pop over to some different views here, kind of, kind of going a little bit crazy around, apologies. We wanna do something like duplicate the cylinder up here, make a scope because these things will show perspective. See this slightly off and that's better. Now what you don't want to do, you don't want to just grab geometry and then start rotating it around to, to match. You do want to make sure that these are lined up with each other. So you don't want a scope that's you know over here and this rotated around like this or something. You rotate the camera around the environment, not the other way around. These objects look like they are more or less in line how they would be, so roughly the right height. You could even go and add the little legs from the bipod on there. We could do that just with a, a cube or something. And the point of this again is just to make sure our perspective is correct. So I can move these objects because they are actually angled in the image. Okay, this might seem really, really weird and I'm not really doing a great job of explaining it, but the idea is you need to line up your camera with the gun. Another thing we have to do is change the focal length because I know because I filmed this that this is not a 35 millimeter lens. I filmed this on a GH5. It's about a 50 millimeter lens on a micro four thirds. So we would have to double that. We get a focal length of about 100. Let's scroll back up to focal length, type in 100. We can zoom back out. Also look at the grid on the floor. If the grid looks like it would actually be in perspective if you were to put something perfectly flat on the ground, then you've probably done a reasonable job. Okay, that will suffice. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna put these on a display layer. We're gonna lock our camera. We're gonna take these objects and we're gonna template them. Next, we need a bullet. So the bullet can be pretty primitive here. I'm gonna switch to a perspective view. So let's say this is just a 7.62 millimeter, something around there. And this is gonna be flying past so quickly. 
it would be kind of senseless to spend a lot of time doing this. Now, if the camera was right up next to that bullet and was going in slow motion, then absolutely you should make the best bullet, the most realistic bullet casing you can, but that's not really the point of, of what we're doing today. Okay, so now we're ready to go. We need to take this bullet though, scale it way down, and we're gonna line it up with that barrel. Now for this, I need to be in a camera so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna bring up the magnification tool. Go to our display layers, just turn this off for a second, because that bullet is way too large. Scale that way down. It needs to be fitting inside this area right here. Pull this down. Now when it flies out, you'll only get a glimpse of it for a moment before it's just a bunch of blur. Okay, something like that, that'll be fine. Exit out of our magnifier tool here. Okay, so we need to make sure that when the slider is open, you can see the bullet just for a few frames. So I'm just gonna pad this about six frames or so, five frames is probably fine. Then I'm gonna click the S key, then I'm gonna do some really quick animation. All right, so this whole thing might take like half a second or so. So I'll go to frame 16, maybe even 14. It's not even gonna take that long. Let's go to the end, it will kind of end around there, go up forward and it'll kind of be higher up we'll get something kind of like that let's just check the speed it's a little bit slow we'll bring this in a little bit you take these keyframes and just push them over one by one i don't need to be looking at this whole thing i think 20 keyframes should be adequate that should be fine uh we do want to get rid of the eased animation though so i need to go to window animation editors graph editor i'm gonna grab all these points set them to linear we don't want it to ease. It could potentially ease out, but it's gonna be so fast, it doesn't even matter. All right, so now we wanna add some rotation. So this will go up and then we can just spin this however we want. And then there, I do have the auto keyer on as well. So if you are wondering how I'm doing this, that's how. So for the lighting, we're gonna do something pretty simple, but before we do that, we do need some kind of light and some kind of material. So we're gonna need an HDR. So what I recommend is HDR Haven. There's a lot of great HDRs on that site and they're all free as well. So here I have, I have a lot of different HDRs and we really don't care about the color as much as just getting some essence of a reflection. So this is gonna be such a subtle thing. It's, might not even really be worth our time doing it but visual effects is all about like small tiny minute details that no one's gonna ever notice i'll find something that looks maybe maybe a forest right and 4k would be more than enough but i'll just copy this into my source images folder and import that so we're gonna be using v-ray if you don't have v-ray then you're just gonna have to figure out how to do this type of stuff with whatever render engine you're using we're gonna go up to create lights v-ray dome light so with the dome light here we're gonna say use dome texture and then load in that hdr okay so i'm gonna turn ipr on i don't want to look at my background anymore so i'm gonna to go to my camera select the camera go to the attribute editor Go down to environment, turn the alpha gain off, and now we can see the HDR. Now the HDR, I actually don't want it to render, so we're going to go to options with the dome light. It's under the dome light shape, and make sure it's set to invisible, and then we can just see that bullet. All right, so let's uh, let's grab a directional light to force a highlight in coming from like the upper upper left hand side of the screen. So for that, we'll just grab a directional light, a regular directional light, and we'll position that like this. I'm scaling this up so I can see it. Scaling lights don't actually do anything. It just makes it easier to select. Now we need to put a shader on this. So we're gonna be adding a new material. We wanna add a V-Ray material. Not worrying at all about textures, but we do want something that looks like it's bronze or some kind of bullet looking material. So that thing more like that. Uh, reflection glossiness, obviously you're gonna have to lower that. Reflection color, we'll just boost that all the way up. 
I'll zoom in on this. We want to have a clear, distinct highlight. So something with lower glossiness, we will see more of a more of a highlight like that. Uh, you can also unlock your IOR and kind of force more of a highlight by increasing your index of refraction. Um, this is going to be read as a specular highlight, so that will be a separate pass and we can tone that down if we need to. So for the rest of the color correction, we can do that in After Effects. All right, so the next thing, I'm going to go to our render settings. There's a lot of things to change here. So we're going to add just the version number. Version number on this is just version one. We're adding a token for that, and we're gonna add that as a, a file. So we're doing a slash to add a file. We'll call this bullet. This is the actual prefix of the file, underscore, and then we'll just say version again. That's all we really need to do for this. We'll, we, we, we'll use OpenEXRs, that's fine. Camera, it's gonna be camera one. We're gonna be using full HD. All right, so go to animation, change this to standard. So let's we'll start frame, frame one, and we'll go to frame 20. I think I actually was only, let's see. Frame 16, is that where, no, okay. Uh, okay, so if we have motion blur on, uh, we need to render at least one more frame so we can actually end. We'll end at frame 12 to be safe. All right, so let's go to V-Ray. Also on this, we wanna say render animation only in batch mode. V-Ray, we don't need a minute, but this is not gonna take a minute, it's gonna be fine. Definitely want some GI on there. Uh, go to overrides and then we're gonna open up camera and then we're gonna add motion blur. All right, so motion blur does not show up in IPR, so make sure you do a proper render just to make sure you can see that. It's gonna look very blurry, something like that. And actually, this is this is taking too long to render. It doesn't really matter. Got a V-Ray, and we'll just say the maximum time is 15 seconds a frame. That should be ample. Settings, nothing there. Overrides, we already did that. All right, so render elements. We are gonna add all of our elements. So we're gonna start with GI, and we're gonna to go to lighting, reflection, specular we don't need anything else here uh, we don't need ao there's nothing to occlude so there's no point to use ao all right so that's all that we need i think so global illumination direct light reflection specular okay right so now we are ready to go save this click okay and then we're just going to batch render right click render all right, so inside After Effects, we're gonna grab that sequence, make sure sequence is on, and then import them. First thing we have to do, go to interpret footage. We need to make sure that we're using 24 FPS. Color management, you need to set linear light to be on, we're forcing it to be on, and then click OK. Okay, so next, all we have to do is go find where he opens that slider, which is gonna be, what do you say, 142 around there. I'm gonna pull those down. So we need to start seeing this by 143. As soon as the, as the slider is fully open, that's when it's gonna fly out. So it looks like it's fully open at frame 144, so then we would expect the bullet to fly out at 144. So for these frames here, we're just gonna click P for position, and we're gonna just animate the position. So that's fine there. Move this up a little bit. Just gonna keep moving this. Again, the tracking on this can be pretty easy, and as soon as it flies off, it doesn't matter anymore. Okay, so we're gonna grab that slider mat. I'm gonna duplicate it. You can call it like slider inside chamber. And the other one will actually be a mat. And we're gonna grab a set mat effect. So set mat, pull this over. So the mat that we're gonna be referencing is going to be slider mat. Type's gonna be alpha channel. We'll say effects and masks. We're gonna have to animate this because at frame 143 and 142, it's fine. But as soon as we get to 144, the bullet flies out. But the slider mat is only this little area here. So if we solo this, anytime the bullet goes outside of this area, it's gone and we, we can't see it anymore. So we're gonna have to animate our set mat effect. All right, so at frame 143, everything's good. Keyframe that on at 143. 144, we'll change this to be full, which means it's not essentially being used at all. And now the bullet is visible and now we can proceed. So what we've been looking at here on the bullet is the master beauty. So we need to use the extractor effect in order to extract all the separate channels. So extractor really can should be before the set mat. And we're just gonna duplicate this three more times. One, two, three. We're gonna go through each of the passes and set them. So the first one, GI is fine. We'll call this layer GI. Next we have lighting. Then we have reflections. And then we have specular. Grab GI, pull it underneath, then lighting. 
these don't really matter the order but reflection specular and lighting all require additive effects turn these off and then we're going to do some color correction for the specularity let's actually turn our master cc back on so we can see this and we'll go to a layer or we'll go to a frame where we can see that highlight so it looks like it's sticking out through the mat a little bit so we need to go back to our matte edge pull that in Okay, so there we can see it, but it, the whole thing looks a little bit too dark. So we'll go to our GI. This uh, GI is almost black, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab an exposure color correction tool, and I'm just gonna crank up that exposure until we can really start to see it. What I should have done is in Maya, boost the intensity of the dome light, uh, but I think this is gonna be fine. Lighting, also we could use exposure, but I do prefer curves, unless we're gonna be crushing it all the way to the very edge. Boost up the lighting a little bit. Now it is supposed to be quite dark, so that looks a little bit silly. It looks like it's illuminated. That looks that looks pretty good. Specular, again, grab curves. We should have done more with the lighting in Maya, but since this is so simple, it's really not that big of a deal. We get a nice highlight there. Now on the lighting layer, if we wanted to add a bit more blue into that, we can easily do that just by boosting that up a little bit and then on the reflection doesn't look like there was much in the ways of reflection for this again I'm gonna use an exposure tool pull this over boost the reflections just a tad when we blur this these little specks will kind of fade away so the next thing we're gonna add a defocus control so the defocus control is gonna be a null object defocus defocus control again is gonna be just a camera lens blur and then the blur radius, we don't know what that is right now. We are going to repeat edge pixels just in case. I'm going to copy this onto reflection. I'm going to open up the effects controls for camera lens blur here and the same thing on our defocus control. So this one is going to be our master. Click enter and you can rename it. And then for our camera lens blur, we're going to hold down alt, click the stopwatch. We're going to attach the blur radius of our camera lens blur to the blur radius of our master camera lens blur release and now this one is always going to be a copy of this one an instance of it we can close this now and then copy this camera lens blur effect onto each of our passes okay so looking let's boost the exposure here just so we can see the sharpness it's out of focus but it's not that out of focus maybe do a value of around two it's also looking a bit saturated so the layer that has the most color is this lighting pass so i'll go to lighting and then also gi so i'll add a hue and saturation effect pull this above your camera lens blur and we'll lower the saturation be about 40 percent i'll copy that effect paste it on gi and again move it above your camera lens blur okay so that's looking pretty good we'll reset our exposure and then when it comes down we need to make sure that we can see where that goes so it almost just disappears, it's so blurry. But right here at frame 150, this should not be visible. This is also looking extremely bright after we color correct it with all that motion blur on, uh, but we shouldn't see it here anyway. So we can trim all these layers, alt right bracket. We do that the frame before, there we go. And it doesn't look like that we're really gonna be able to see it. Okay, so one, one problem that I see here is that frame 146, this kind of disappears. And 147, it's just gone. It's there, it's just that we can't see it at all. So what I'm gonna do, go back into Maya. It's, it's just too sharp right here. So what I'll do, I'll move this over further and I'll give it another frame to do that. That might be a little bit better. I'll go ahead and render this out and be back in a moment. Okay, so one of the joys of using multi-channel EXRs is that if you have a different version, all you gotta do is go to replace footage, go to your version two, and replace it. And everything else just drops in place. Everything's already composited. And all you have to do here is go and check out the new version. All right, so that's a little bit better. We get a, a, a hint of a highlight there as it goes behind the grass. And then we don't really need to rotoscope anything. It's going so fast. Just check the beginning and make sure that's also okay. All right, so I made a mistake here. My slider needs to be underneath the bullet passes. And then we can probably go and lower the exposure. No wonder it was, no wonder it was so high. So this will be on our lighting. And we can probably go back to our lighting here and just lower that curves. 
a little bit. A little bit ridiculously intense, and also lower the blue. It just increases desaturation on that. Okay, so what I will do at the very end here, when the bullet is inside the chamber, it should be a lot darker. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna duplicate my reflection layer. It doesn't really matter which layer you do. I'm gonna call it bullet matte. Don't need an exposure control on it. And I'm gonna solo this, and then I'm gonna fill it. So I'm gonna fill it just so I don't accidentally think that this is a different type of layer. It is a, just a simple matte. And I'm gonna go to new layer, call this bullet CC. And I'm gonna set that track matte to be alpha. And then on the first few frames, I'm going to have a curve so it's pretty dark because that bullet should be in shadow. Darken it down just a little bit, something more like that. And as soon as that leaves the chamber, we can either blend this layer off. So we can click T, set a keyframe here at 143, go forward one frame to set this to be off. So then we get the highlight. And if again, if it's too strong after I render this out, I can then uh, I can adjust it. All right, so let's set this back to fit up to 100. Now let's see what we've got. Our scope highlight is a little bit intense, so I will change that down to something like 50%. I'm still not really happy with that bullet going up into the fur area, so all I'm gonna do is just lower that bullet. And just to make sure I am clear of his fur, I'll lower this. I'm not gonna go up so much. I'll turn this off, save this out. I'll render this and then show you the result. Okay, so this is version three. Kind of like that a little bit more. Something like that. This goes across now. Okay. All right. So that sums up this tutorial. I know we kind of, we didn't do every little tiny thing. I mean, you can go back and add details. Okay. That wraps up this version of this tutorial. I have done this several times for my classes. So here is what this version turned out to be. Now here is another version that I did. It has like optical flares, lens flare stuff. It's over the top, but it's kind of stylistic. I kind of like it. You can do various types of iterations of these types of things. All right, guys, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I realize it's a little bit long-winded, but I wanted to show you as much as possible. If you learned something, drop a like. It really gives me some motivation to keep making content. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, and I'll be back very soon with some more content. Peace.